Hey everyone, welcome to today's Unity tutorial. Today we are building a basic first person interaction game in Unity. By the end of this video, you will have a playable first person game where you can walk around, aim, and shoot projectiles. Let's jump in. Let's start by creating a new project. Open Unity Hub, click New Project, select the 3D core template, give your project a name, then click Create. Wait for the editor to load your new project. Let's start by adding some assets to our project. For this project, we'll be using these free assets. The link for these assets are available in the description as well. Add these assets to your account. In the Unity editor, go to the Windows menu, click Package Manager, select the assets from the list. You may need to click the download button to download the assets to your computer. Click the import button for all the assets to import them to your project. After all the assets have been imported to your project, close the package manager. In Unity Editor, go to the Edit drop-down menu and select Project Settings. Select Player from the list on the left and expand Other Settings option. Scroll down Other Settings until you find the Active Input Handling option. Click the drop-down menu and select both. A Unity Editor Restart message might appear. Simply click Apply. When the Unity restarts, close the Project Settings window. Again, click the Edit drop-down menu and select Preferences. Select the external tools from the list on the left. Then, for the external script editor option, select the correct version of Visual Studios. Click the Regenerate Project Files button. Now, in the scene, first thing we will do is create a simple ground or a floor to work on. Go to the hierarchy window, click the plus menu, select 3D object, then cube. A cube should be created in your scene. Go to the inspector, scale the cube so that it looks more like a floor. I use the following settings. X100, Y1, Z100. Next. We will give the ground some color using a material. Go to the project window, select the assets folder, right click in the right hand panel of the assets folder and select create, then folder. When the folder is created, give it the name materials. Double click on the materials folder to open it. Right click in the materials folder and go to create, then materials. Give the material the name grass color. Select the material in the project window. You should be able to see its properties in the inspector. Go to the inspector. Click on the block next to the elevator property at the top of the inspector. Clicking on the block next to the elevator property at the top of the inspector will open a color picker window. Select a green color. I entered the hexadecimal value. 228C22. Next, we need to assign the materials to the ground cube in the scene. To do this, drag the grass color material from the project window and drop it into the name of the ground object in the hierarchy. Your updated ground should look like it has a green grass color applied to it. Now, let's add a first person character and camera to our scene. To do this, first delete the main camera from our scene. Go to the hierarchy and select the main camera game object. Then right click on the game object and select delete. To add a first person camera, go to the starter assets folder, first person controller, prefabs. Now drag main camera, player capsule and follow camera to the hierarchy window. 
Select player follow camera and add player camera route to the following settings in the inspector window. Select the player capsule in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector. Set the position of player capsule to 0, 2, 0. We are now ready to use the first person character controller. We will now add a target to the first person camera. Go to the hierarchy window, right click on the main camera assets, go to the 3D object sub menu and select plane. A plane should be created as a child object of the main assets. Rotate the plane minus 90 on the x axis, scale it to 0.008 on the x, y and z axis. Set the z-axis position to 1. The transform component for the plane should now have the following position, rotation and scale properties. Also remove the mesh collider component from the plane. Click on the three dots on the right side of the mesh collider text. Then click remove component. Next we need to add a crosshair texture. You can source the internet for the crosshair. In general, you need a crosshair with a transparent background. You can find this crosshair in the description as well or you can find your own on the internet. Download your crosshair texture. Go to the project window, select the assets folder, right click in the right hand panel of the assets folder and select create folder. When the folder is created, give it the name textures. Double click on the texture folder to open it. Next, we will import the image you have downloaded into the Unity project by dragging it from the saved location to the assets window. Drag your crosshair texture from the project window onto the crosshair plane in the hierarchy. When you drag your crosshair texture from the project window onto the crosshair plane in the hierarchy, Unity will automatically create a material for the crosshair in the materials folder. The crosshair texture should be applied to the crosshair. You will probably have a white border around your crosshair. We want to remove this. Go to hierarchy and click on crosshair plane. Go to the inspector and the find crosshair materials. Click on the triangle on the left side of the word shaders. This will expose more of materials properties. Find the rendering mode drop down list and select cutout. You will now add a projectile to the first person controller. Go to hierarchy window and click the plus menu. Select 3D object and then sphere. Next, we will add a material to the sphere. Go to the assets, material folders, right click on the material folder and go to create, then materials. Give the material the name sphere color. Select the material in the project window. Go to the inspector window, click on the block next to the elevator property at the top of the inspector. Clicking on the block, Next to the elevator property at the top of the inspector will open a color picker window. Select a red color. I enter the hexadecimal value FF0000. Next, we will set the physics engine to control the projectile by adding a rigid component to the sphere. Select the sphere in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector and click the add component button. Select Rigid Body from the list and add component. Next, we will give the projectile a tag of sphere. Make sure the projectile sphere is selected in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector, click the tag drop down menu and select add tags. The inspector will change to the tags and layer window. Click the plus icon in the tag section. Enter the name sphere and click save. Tags and layer windows should have the sphere tag in it. Select the sphere again in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector. Click the tag drop down menu and select the sphere. Next, we want the projectile to be stored and initiated when a key is pressed. We don't want the projectile in the scene by default. Therefore, we need to store the object as a prefab and initiate it when a key is pressed. Go to the project window. Select the assets folder. Right click on the right head panel. Select create then folders. When the folder is created, give it the name prefabs. Next, drag the sphere from the hierarchy and drop it into the prefabs folder in the project window. You can now delete the original sphere object in the scene. Do not delete the projectile in the project window. 
Next, we will add a script to our Unity project to launch our projectile. Select the Assets folder in the project window. Right click in the right hand panel of the Assets folder. Select Create Folders. When the folder is created, give it the name Scripts. Double click on the script folder to open it. Right click on the scripts folder and go to Create C Sharp Script. When the script has been created, give it the name Projectile Launcher. Double click on your Projectile Launcher C Sharp Script to open it in the Visual Studios. Update the code in the script file. The script is available in the description as well. Save the script in Visual Studios and go back to Unity. Next, we need to attach the script to the camera. In the Unity editor, go to the hierarchy window and select the main camera game object. Go to the inspector. In the inspector, click the add component button. Search for projectile launcher script to add it. Next, we need to set some properties in the projectile launcher component. In the inspector, find the projectile launcher component. We also need to assign the projectile prefabs to the script variable projectile rigid body and we need to assign the muzzle game object. To do this, drag the projectile prefab from the project window and drop it onto the projectile rigid body variable in the inspector. Next, we set the muzzle variable. Go to the hierarchy, set the main camera game object, go to the inspector and find the projectile launcher component. Click the bullet icon from the muzzle variable. A select game object window will appear. Select the scene tab and select the crosshair from the list. We will now create a different projectile. Go to the project window, go to the free food pack folder, prefabs. Select the chicken assets and drag it into the scene. Make sure the chicken is selected in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector. Set the scale of the chicken to 5, 5, 5. Next, we will add a sphere collider. Go to the inspector and click the add component button. Search for sphere collider to add it. Next, we will add a rigid body. Go to the inspector and select the add component button. Search for rigid body to add it. Next, we will give the projectile a tag of sphere. Make sure the projectile sphere is still selected in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector, click the tag drop down menu and select sphere tag. In project window, go to the assets prefab folder. Next, drag the chicken from the hierarchy and drop it into the prefab folder in the project window. You will get a message box asking if you would like to create a new original prefabs or a variant from the existing prefab chicken. Click the original prefabs button. Unity will create a new independent chicken prefab in the prefabs folder. You can now delete the original object in the scene or from the hierarchy window. Go to the hierarchy window and select the main camera game object. Go to the inspector window. In the inspector window, find the projectile launcher component. We need to assign our new projectile prefabs to the script variable projectile rigid body. To do this, drag the chicken prefabs from the project window and drop it onto the projectile rigid body variable in the inspector. We will now create a simple animal to feed. Go to voxel animals, assets, prefabs and select the lion prefabs and drag it into the scene. Select the lion prefabs you have just dragged into the scene in the hierarchy. Go to the inspector and remove the player controller script component. Do this by clicking the three dots on the right side of the player controller script, then click remove component. Next, we need to store the lion prefabs as a new prefab so we can add many instances to the scene. In the project window, go to the assets, prefabs folder. Next, drag the lion from the hierarchy and drop it into the prefabs folder in the project window. Click the original prefabs button. Next, we will create a C sharp script to control the lion prefabs. In Unity Editor, go to Project Window and go to Assets, Script Folder. Right click on the Script Folder to create C Sharp Script. When the script has been created, give it the name Animal Manager. Double click on your Animal Manager C Sharp Script to open it in the Visual Studios. Update the code in the script file from the description below. 
Save the script in the Visual Studios and go back to Unity. We will now add our script to the Lion Prefabs. In the project window, go to the Assets, Prefabs folder, select the Lion Prefabs in the project window, go to the Inspector. In the Inspector, click the Add Component button, which is at the bottom of the window. Source for Animal Man is a script to add it. Now drag an instance of the Lion Prefab from the Assets, Prefabs folder into your scene. We are now ready to playtest the scene. Press the play button to playtest your scene. We have now created a simple animal feeder game. You can add more animals to the scene and explore more options to enhance the game. That's it for today's tutorial. We have built a simple first person game where you can move around, aim and shoot projectiles. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more Unity content. Thanks for watching.